Hello world this is Sameer and I welcome you all on this episode of AI Society and in this particular episode we are going to make again a very awesome project which is the image colorization and image colorization basically refers to colorization of the black and white image take any black and take any black and white image and that will be converted into colored image using this particular code so let's start with the code and let's start coding So again, uh, moving forward, just want to tell you that I'm going to post a lot of projects in computer vision and again in the uh, machine learning field on this YouTube channel. Follow me on Instagram also. I post a lot of content on the Instagram too. So let's start with it and let's not waste any more time. So basically, we are having the uh, we are going to import these two libraries, which is NumPy and OpenCV. I hope you have installed the OpenCV. If you haven't, just type pip install OpenCV dash Python, and you'll be able to install your library pretty easily on the terminal. So open your terminal, open your terminal, and just type pip install OpenCV dash Python, and the, your OpenCV will be installed. If you haven't installed the NumPy, just type pip install NumPy, and your library will be installed way easily. So again, after that, what we need to do? I'm just printing the uh, printing the statement to load to tell uh, the command to, to tell the terminal that I'm loading the model. And after that, we are making a variable called net. Okay, we are making a variable called net, and we are having the uh, we are basically reading the uh, pre-made models. Okay, that are made in cafe. So read net from cafe is basically responsible for reading the cafe models, which are basically proto txt and uh, colorization release version two cafe model. So cafe is just like a framework. Cafe is also framework, just like a TensorFlow. So basically, you don't need to worry about too much. If you want to know more about cafe, you can just uh, visit to a link. I'll I'll paste the link in the description. I'll paste the link in the description, and you can just visit that. You will know more about the cafe. What are cafe uh, uh, cafe frameworks? And after that, we are importing these two. Uh, not importing. Basically, we are using these two uh, files, which are colorization deploy v2 uh, dot proto txt and colorization release v2 dot cafe model. So let me tell you what these are. So basically. Uh, if we if we yeah so basically the these two files were made by Mr. Uh, Rich Zhang. These two files were made by Mr. Rich Zhang. You can uh, follow him on GitHub and also on Twitter. I'll I'll post the link in the description. You can just follow him. And this was this particular project was made by Rich Zhang. And uh, these two files were. Uh, provided by him and this is basically automatic color detection you just need to uh, load, load the model and just use it to color detect your uh, to, to basically not color detection not sorry not, not color detection to basically colorize your black and white image to color okay so we'll just need to put some of the you know some of the uh, parameters you just need to change some of the parameters and it will work fine so basically uh, this was made by Rich Yang. You can visit this particular link. I'll paste it in the description. You can just visit this particular link to know more about him and his work and his research paper. Okay, so after that, what we are doing, we are loading a file called pts underscore in underscore hull dot npy. So, what this is, let me tell you what this is. So, basically, is getting opened. Yeah. So this is the interactive deep colorization uh, file. It is an interactive deep colorization file which is made by Jun Jians. Okay, Jun Jians, and you can visit his particular GitHub profile to know more about his work, to know more about his uh, research that he had done in this particular field. Okay, so this this guy is responsible for this particular file. Okay, and after that. We are we, we just have to use it if you want to roll if you want to read more about how he did that how he approached a particular problem then you can read his on his github profile after that we are making a variable called class 8 which is basically getting the layer id which is present at class 8 underscore ab so class 8 underscore ab what is this so get layer id is basically responsible for uh, you know converting the you know the string name of a layer Okay, of a deep learning layer into an integer, into an integer, so that we can use that afterwards. Okay, we have to use that afterwards. So basically, get layer ID is basically converting the string uh, layer name into integer callable thing, and you are again doing the same thing to con8, which is the this particular layer. And after that, 
like this part and after that we are using the transpose method on the pts which is basically pts uh, underscore in underscore hell under, uh, dot npy we are uh, transposing that and reshaping it to this particular format after that we are having net dot get layer class 8 again getting the layer at class 8 and we are basically getting the blobs blobs basically refers to the binary large objects so we are getting the blobs there and uh, converting it into float 32 so as type variable is basically responsible for like converting of a particular object into a particular data type so we are using float 30, float float 32 for that for that after that we are doing the same thing on the con 8 which is uh, accepting the binary large object and into this particular data type and np.full is basically responsible for uh, let me let me tell you what this is responsible np.full is basically responsible for returning a new array of a given shape and type filled with any value so basically this will return this con 8 will return the uh, it will accept the shape of it which is the sequence we have mentioned 1 comma 313 which is taken from here and then and then after the fill value scalar uh, scalar or vector like so we are having this this particular uh, value for that and then data type is flow 32 after that we are reading the black and white image which is this one we are reading the black and white image that i have downloaded it from the internet you can download it from the internet from any of the famous website like unsplash or any other website i particularly use unsplash for it and after that uh, we are basically uh, scaled and then uh, image dot as type flow 32 so basically again we are scaling that image into flow 32 this particular image is being clear scaled into flow 32 and divided by 255 see now the process of colorization is going to be soon begin okay uh, we are just setting up some things and the, the colorization process will soon begin so after that we are making a variable called lab which is calling cvt to cvt color and taking that scaled image and you know color converting the blue green red into lab so what does this bg2.lab mean so let me tell you from the documentation itself so yeah this is the color conversion documentation so here you can see rgb cie lab so in this case 8 bit or 16 bit images rgb are converted into floating point format and scaled it to fit between 0 and 1 range okay so all the red green and blue uh, values are converted into floating point format and scaled it between 0 and 1 so that is why we have scaled that into flow 32 and then it is basically scaling that between 0 and 1 okay so after that we are resizing the image that is present in the lab into this particular format in the 224 and 224 and after that we are splitting that what we are doing this will create a list of it and then we are taking the first element from the list that has been created by uh, resize and then minus it by 50 now the now actually we are playing with the contrast and rgb colors we are just playing with the contrast and the rgb play colors and we'll start doing that soon so net again net dot set input so net is coming from uh, here here okay so we are basically setting the input cv2 dot dnn uh, dnn blob from image so basically taking the blob from basically binary large objects from the image and passing the uh, L map that means the, the first uh, element of the list that has been created by the resize and then minus it by 50 and passing it to here and after that this is some te technicalities to transpose it okay this, these are things fixed these things are fixed if you want to run this code you cannot change these so basically i'm taking this from the stack overflow and the github only i'm not making this from my own after that ab is equal to cv2 dot resize resizing the image taking the av image that is being you know uh, taken from the yeah that has been taken from here okay and passing it as a resize we have to resize this image into these two format into this shape so what is this shape we are basically uh, tilting the shape opposite so taking the second second of the uh, second of the uh, image that means this is the image we are taking the second um, that means first element 0 and 1 first element from the shape and uh, 0 is element from the shape and tilting that into resizing it and storing it into ab variable after that we are taking the variable l cvt dot split we are again like this the same way we did here 
again what we are doing sorry again what we are doing we are again uh, splitting that image into uh, taking the first element splitting that image and taking the first element and colorize is what now what this is going to do this is going to concatenate the l on this particular on this particular place that means new axis basically is responsible for you know changing the dimension of the array like if, if if it is one d if it is one dimension array that is going to be two dimension array i saw this on the stack overflow explanation so this is the thing simply put np dot new axis increase the dimension of the existing array by one more dimension that means if it is 1d array it will become 2d array if it is 2d array it will become 3d array in the similar way if it is 3d array it will become 4d array if it is if it is 4d array then it will become 5d array so here it is a quick explanation people have really loved this explanation although it is not having the tick mark but it is the right one so it is doing the same thing here for the technicality purpose and then doing it on the uh, row row or row row basically after that that taking that colorized image and uh, replacing it with safety dot color and converting back to bgr okay what we did we did basically took the black and white image into uh, converted the black and white image uh, bgr format to lab that means uh, between fixing it between 0 and 1 changing it to floating point and fixing it between 0 and 1 and again doing some of the technicalities uh, then we are basically converting black to bgr okay and that is the beauty of it like these technicalities are basically responsible for it and after that we are colorize is equal to np dot clip colorize 0 comma 1 okay so after that uh, colorize is equal to taking the image from here taking the uh, contrast from here multiplying it by with the colorized image and changing the data type into unit 8 okay and then we are just showing the image showing the colorized image and then waiting for the key escape so that is the how it is going to be it is going to help us out to uh, implement this colorization of the image let's run it let's run it whether it work or not this is the image and we want this particular image to be black and white yeah this particular image to be black and white so let's run the code from here it's running okay it's taking a little bit time but let's give it the time it needs okay so as you can see this is the original image that is being downloaded by the unslash.com or any other dot website you can take that image and convert that into black and white uh, colored image okay and see how beautifully it, it did i think it did beautifully and i'm telling you the better the resolution of the images the better will be the performance so use that have fun with it take the old photos of yours and do that uh, and kind of change that into the uh, you know colored image and uh, message me on the instagram if you have some problem comment comment down below basically to, if you have some problem and follow me on instagram i post a lot of content on machine learning and ai and after that uh, subscribe to my youtube channel and press the bell icon i know this is the traditional way of the youtubers just i'm just reminding you if you love programming just do that don't think just do that smash that button thank you so much we'll meet in the next video